well. Minister, preserved. sorry, I have to read out my bit first. To move Amendment 8764.2. Minister. Thank you, President Officer. Just so keen to get involved in this debate, President Officer. That was definitely a thing from Douglas Ross there. Not sure what it was, not sure what the relevance uh, many much of it had to what we're do talking about here today. But let me tell him right from the start. The important thing for me is the fact that transparency and scrutiny of this government is important. That's why it's in the amendment and that's why it's actually there. So, presiding officer, can I take this opportunity to move the amendment in my name? And, presiding officer, can I just say one thing to start with? On the 1st of April, many people might find that the irony in this. Douglas Ross was in the great town of Paisley, where he was there for one of his many jobs, uh, the one of being a football referee. It was an important game between St Mullen and Livingston. Mr Ross had a terrible game as he missed a stonewall penalty in the first four minutes, but luckily that was corrected by VAR. <laughs> but this is a relevant and interesting point, presiding officer. There was a crowd. There was a crowd of 5,894 people attending. Many contemplated that may or may not be the membership of the Scottish Tory party, but that's the reason. We will never know, presiding officer, because the Conservatives won't publish, won't be transparent, and they won't practice what they're trying to preach here. The absolute hypocrisy. No, we've heard enough from you, Mr Ross. The absolute hypocrisy. The absolute hypocrisy from the Conservatives is almost laughable. Presiding officer, you have to admire someone who has that level of brass neck, who need to complain about a lack of party transparency when you lead the Scottish Conservative Party. Mr Ross's political party that illegally prorogued the UK Parliament and avoid debate and scrutiny. The party of a Prime Minister that would only agree to speak to the Scottish press if he could handpick the media and he could actually handpick the questions. The party that packs the House of Lords with donors like Scotland Office Minister Lord Offord, who, after being appointed for life in the House of Lords and given a place in the government payroll, had given the Tories £150,000. And the Tories come to us here in the Scottish Parliament and they talk about our integrity. The, this party, the Conservatives, have received, received hundreds of thousands from unincorporated associations that do not reveal their origin of funding and they have questioned the integrity of others. You just cannot take the Tories seriously on this issue. A party that refused to see how many members it has while criticising those that do. There is a word, there is a word for this, uh, presiding officer, and a word for that person, and it is a hypocrite. And I am not going to stand here and claim that there are not issues in the SNP which need to be addressed. But I can stand here and say that these issues are being addressed. Mr Ross is having uh, a lot of fun and games over here in the corner, just shouting from the sidelines. It must be from his time as a referee. Uh, but within days of Hamza Yusuf's election... Minister, please do say, we can't have two members standing at the same time. I think, uh, Mr Ross, the Minister probably indicated by his uh, not taking your... Uh, uh, intervention request that he probably isn't planning to take your intervention. Minister, please resume. Thank you, presiding officer. But what I have said is the fact that we are dealing with this. The First Minister, within days of his election as leader, announced an urgent review of internal party governance. And as our amendment makes clear, this government that places a great importance in open openness and transparency. We are fully committed to meeting the standards of public rightly expects of us being an open government. Let me give you just a few examples of that. Ministerial engagements and travel are published monthly. We also aim to proactively publish minutes of government meetings on our website so that people can see who their government is meeting with and what we, what we are discussing and understand how discussions are made. We are focused on making the necessary improvements in handling freedom of information requests, as set out in our published improvement plan agreed with the Information Commissioner. Our performance on responding to requests on the time is comparable with the wider public sector in Scotland, at around 86%. But it is important to note that we are responding to significantly more requests for information, rising by over 50 per cent in the past three years. 
We also recently enhanced transparency on the Scottish Government finances to Parliament and public, including through providing more detailed outturn reporting and providing more detailed material to the Finance and Public Administration Committee, which I know all members of that committee have welcomed. Mr Arthur will provide more detail on the steps we have taken to improve engagement on budget in his closing statement here today. Presiding officer, let me come back to the issue of party membership. Much has been said, but not enough. We are not hearing what their members are. Because of the five parties represented in this chamber, only two have published up-to-date figures of their party members. That's the SNP and the Scottish Greens. And I'm quite happy if he wants to see the membership now. Douglas Ross. Grateful. We've finally had a, an intervention. Uh, but will the Minister accept that his party lied about their figures that led to the resignation that led to the resignation in this Parliament of the head of media and then the party's chief executive? And will he apologise to the press and the public for that? Minister. My, my goodness, presiding officer, I gave him the opportunity to build himself up into a frenzy and that was a bit of a damp squid there from him. This coming from the party of Boris Johnson and all the nonsense that has gone on in Westminster. You know, Douglas Ross has refused to actually publish his members, uh, numbers of his members. He says he has nothing to hide, yet he continues to hide it. His defence in an interview with ITV Border is that the party only publishes its membership figures during a leadership election. Presiding officer, given Douglas Ross's performance today and in recent weeks, I don't think we'll be waiting too long for these figures to be published. 